What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have this S550 Mustang pulled back into the shop. Some of you guys may be familiar with this car. I've actually had it since 2018. We're getting ready to install a 7.3 liter Godzilla truck engine in this thing and give it a ton of torque. But this car has quite a backstory. We've done a lot of things with it in the past. So we're gonna go ahead and refresh your memory on where this thing started, where it's been, and then we're gonna show you where it's going. So we bought this car from Copart. It was actually wrecked in the front, a little bit worse than I initially thought, but this car had an EcoBoost automatic and a little bit of frame damage that we actually ended up fixing pretty well at the shop. So one of the biggest questions about this thing was, obviously I knew how good they were, but I really wanted to see how they drifted. I wanted to experience the EcoBoost. Does it have enough power? Can it spin the tires? How cool is this thing gonna look when we stick it on some coilovers? And can we slide it around in the parking lot? So I took this thing to a drift event and it was not good. The automatic transmission would not unlock at all when you pull the e-brake. And I basically ended up spinning out the whole time. We figured out that we needed something really raw, really powerful that made a ton of cool noises and would do exactly what you told it. And that is where we decided to put in the 2JZ actually out of my S14 drift car. We got this thing fired up on an ECU master ECU. First start went great. Got a lot of the gauges working in it, but uh, we needed to actually get this thing on the dyno, see how much power it made, because we were getting ready to take this thing on a 4,000 mile road trip on drift week one. So this car made 500 horse and 500 torque on 91 pump fuel. We decided to get this thing wrapped. We installed a fresh set of Koenig wheels and a cool wrap. Obviously we're gonna be all over the internet, towing a trailer across the country. We want people to see this thing. That's one of my favorite parts about this car too, is it's unlike any other muscle car. It looks kind of Japanese inspired. So Drift Week 1 started out pretty cool. We ended up doing almost a thousand miles towing the trailer to the first destination. And then we drifted it for the first time on a track, which uh, took a little bit of getting used to with the electric steering and the car not really wanting to self stand. I love the way that the car drove, but it definitely needed a little bit more torque down low. And we found that out by talking with uh, Chelsea Nova. He actually drove the car. He loved it. He liked the power. He liked the way that it felt, but it was just pretty tough in a tandem situation or if you hesitated on anything. We didn't have a lot of torque. The 2JZ is known for its sound and being ultra spicy. This thing freaking dominates at burnout competitions, at two-step competitions. It blows out people's eardrums. It sounds cool, it looks cool, exhibition style drifting, big smoky drifts, all that stuff, it is awesome at. But when you are tandeming with another car, it is tough to keep this thing in boost. And if you hesitate, it, because the chassis is so heavy, it is hard to recover from that. I took this thing to a couple different events across the country, obviously Drift Week, local Drift Colorado events. We took it to Ice Cream Cruise, did some drifting there. I set up a rowdy two-step ignition limiter, so it just sounded like it was backfiring and, you know, AK-47 gunshots the whole time. But uh, soon after that, we decided it was time to yank this thing out and get started on its next endeavor. And now the 7.3 Godzilla enters the chat. It's finally time to dust this thing off and get back to work. A little bit over a year ago, we actually got this 7.3 Godzilla in here and mounted. So uh, we made some engine mounts. We had a big issue with the steering shaft. So Garrett, when he was here, he actually cut the stock exhaust manifold, cut like a piece of pie out of it and rotated it closer to the block. So it was actually closer. So that way we had plenty of room for the steering shaft. So those have been modified. Engine mounts are modified. We have a factory MT82 transmission in here with a factory drive shaft with a factory shift linkage. The engine is basically in there kind of ready to go. It's just, we need to hook up all the systems around it. Obviously we got to hook up a wiring harness, fuel system, cooling system, all of that stuff. But the biggest issue is that this thing right now is stock. It's hundred percent stock, literally came out of a stock Amazon truck or a van that got rolled in a hurricane. We need to do some internal upgrades. So 
For the future, we plan on doing some forced induction on it. For right now, it's gonna stay naturally aspirated. So we're gonna go ahead and move over to our little to-do list over here on the windshield. So first thing that we need to do is a Texas Speed camshaft valve springs retainers. And to do that, we're gonna go ahead and pull the engine. Then we have a center force twin disc clutch that we're gonna go ahead and install before we put the engine back in it. We have a complete Dietrichworks fuel system that some of it's left over from the 2J, but we're gonna integrate that with the Godzilla. A full Holley Terminator X uh, ECU package with a wiring harness that goes to the 7.3. Uh, we need to integrate that harness from the ECU into the chassis. So obviously the factory wiring in here, we gotta give it power. So we, when you push the button, things actually work. Cooling system, drive shaft, heater core, bleed the clutch, just little things like that. Uh, we also need to modify the exhaust and the modified headers to actually hook up to a Holly exhaust as well. And we have a full Holly dash, a 12 inch, pretty big O screen that's gonna go in there and it's gonna show us all of our digital uh, information. And then after that, we can drive this freaking thing. So we've got a lot of work to do. So we're gonna get this thing over on the lift and uh, start pulling this engine. So right here, we have the stock five liter clutch. I was a little bit confused when I was doing this initial swap, but I figured out that pretty much the 7.3 Godzilla is a modular bell housing, bolt pattern, everything for the crank. So this is literally a Coyote clutch disc and pressure plate, flywheel, all that other stuff. And like I said, we have an upgrade unit from Center Force that will go on before we go in there. Another key point is look at this driver side exhaust manifold. This is where Garrett cut this thing in half and welded it up because Typically, this thing was kind of kicked out over here and the steering shaft literally goes right there. So this is uh, an awesome way that he did that. And you can see our uh, engine mounts, kind of our mock-up engine mounts. We already have a jig for these engine mounts. So we're gonna go ahead and install a little rubber bushing in there as well. But uh, yeah, overall, clutch off. And then we're gonna start pulling off the front cover once we get this thing on the engine stand and yank that cam out. Camshaft is installed on this thing, but when you install a aftermarket camshaft, sometimes you need to install aftermarket valve springs. So you can see we have a stock one here on the right, and then we have a pack valve spring, which is spec for these camshafts. This was a whole camshaft kit. So we are obviously installing this. We're not pulling the cylinder heads off of it. This is a pushrod engine, which means that it has lifters, hydraulic lifters that are in the center line of the the center line of the engine. So what we did <laughs> is we flipped the engine over so that way the lifters don't like fall out. Cause if, if it was up, it actually wouldn't let me pull the camshaft out. I was sitting there tugging on it. And it was like, ding, 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 ding. Flipped the engine over, rotated the camshaft, the lifters, the hydraulic lifters basically went bloop, stayed there, which was very courteous of them. Then we were able to install the camshaft. In order to replace the valve springs without pulling off the cylinder heads, what first thing that we need to do is get a valve spring compressor, you know, thing. And then we also need to add compressed air to the cylinder, kind of similar to doing like a leak down test. So compressed air right here. You could use a compression tester to do this. So you can just hook up your air compressor right there. And uh, I'm just using a leak down testers because we're not putting like 100 pounds of air. We're just adding like 35 pounds of air. And this guy right here, just grab the magnet, compress it, pull the keepers out, pull this valve spring out, take the retainer at the top, Stick that on a new valve spring to get back on there. In time with where Eric is at now, compress that guy, 
We're using a uh, grease on a small screwdriver trick. So you clean that off so that it's not oily, and then you use grease and it's kind of like a magnet and it sticks it on there, and then you use that. Get it in the hole. Then you wait patiently while he gets the other one ready. I learned the grease on a screwdriver trick from a machine shop. Actually, a long time ago when I was uh, built my first Evo, I went there and he's like, oh, I just got to throw the valve springs in it real quick. Threw it up on the bench, literally used a tool and, uh, and did that. And that's pretty much it. This little tool, I think they're like 20 or 30 bucks. You get them on Amazon. Link in the description. This right here is the jig that I was talking about that Garrett made previously. Right now, these are the temporary engine mounts, kind of like the mock-up mounts that we initially made. Garrett cut out this little template. He took it home, he put it in a CNC plasma, freaking cut it out, just welded on some rods right here, just super basic to get the engine in the right position. Then he took these mounts right here and he brought them over and actually made a jig and then designed these engine mounts right here. So this is all these pieces together. So basically these little guys right here go right there that goes up there and then we actually have a bushing so it'll help with a little bit of vibration and stuff too uh, he also kind of changed the setup on the the passenger side so you can see how this thing has a little bend but yeah so pretty much he got it all set up and ready to weld but he didn't have time to weld them before he uh he headed out of town so uh, i'm gonna do that i need to figure out if i'm gonna take it or make it but uh, after we get the front cover on this thing that's what I'll do. Shout out to Garrett for getting these engine mounts all mocked up and ready to go. He pretty much designed these things over a year ago when we initially started working on this project. So this was the one, he took these home, made a jig, and then got this stuff all cut out, ready to go. So all I had to do was pretty much weld them up and paint them. So, and it actually looked like I kind of knew what I was doing, but that is only because Garrett knew what he was doing. So shout out to Garrett. I really miss him. He's out there in Maryland right now. Um, I think he got the shop figured out and he's going to be doing some stuff out there in the future. If you guys want to follow him on social media, it's GH works on Instagram. If you want to see what he's been up to. So right here, this, we don't need this anymore. That leads us to the next portion of this project, which is the clutch. So I'm super stoked to be working with Center Force yet again with this amazing twin disc clutch. This is their DYAD system. And we actually have pretty much this exact clutch in the C6 Z06 Corvette. And these things hold over 1300 foot pounds of torque and they maintain a stock pedal fill. So literally you get in the stock Corvette, you push it down and you're like, oh, my grandma could drive this. You get in there with this clutch that'll hold 1300 foot pounds of torque feels pretty much the exact same. So the cool thing about this clutch is it actually comes with kind of a dyno uh, for your exact clutch. So you can see right there, it says average torque holding capacity, 1,353 foot pounds, has a serial number up there on the top and the date that it was produced and the inspection. So pretty, uh, pretty cool right there. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing apart and uh, start installing it. They sent it to you pre-assembled, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it apart. Obviously you can't just stick it on. Everything is all balanced, so there's a pink mark right there on the top. So we'll uh, we'll keep that in mind when we are putting everything back together in the future. This thing is equipped with a uh, kind of a dual technology. So it actually has a floating disc where you can see that this disc comes straight off. 
and actually floats. So a lot of traditional twin discs will actually have two floating discs, whereas this one, it just has one. Then right here, this is a the floating plate. So this is technically like the flywheel or the friction surface that it goes up against. So this would be like your brake rotor on your car. So this is a floating piece as well. We have the direct drive. So you can see, and it's all, everything's all labeled. It's, uh, it's pretty nice overall, look at that. That is just, that's pretty serious. That's like a piece of jewelry yep. right there. That is freaking crazy. So yeah, all of this stuff, I'll keep all of this pink stuff kind of lined up with its, itself, but we'll go ahead and uh, stick this guy on. Messing with the wiring harness with this thing last night, I was actually gonna stick it on there and get it in the car. And then I started looking at the wiring. This is actually a, almost more of like a universal Coyote engine swap harness. So there's like oil pressure, TPS, idle air control, another idle air control. And I would say that this harness is set up for more of a universal hot rod. Let's say you're gonna delete drive-by wire and you wanna put a cable or something on it. We have a relationship with Holly and when we were initially doing this build about a year ago, they didn't have as much development for the Godzilla. So there was a couple other people that would take the 5.0 harness, modify it to actually work with the 7.3 Godzilla. Now that they actually have a plug and play harness, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get one of those ordered. But in the meantime, we're gonna get this thing in the engine bay. So we're gonna get in there, that way we can mess with exhaust and some more plumbing. So uh, I guess we're gonna hook the chain up and get it sitting in there. So we have crossed a couple things off of the list. So look at that, Texas Speed camshaft and valve springs. Done, center force clutch. Done, uh, the Holly engine harness and Terminator Max ECU, we st we're working on that. Uh, fuel system is probably gonna be close, but we haven't started messing with that yet. Went ahead and stuck the engine back in this thing uh, with the new engine mounts. All the bolts went in, which was like really good. We didn't have to like pull out the grinder and you know, buzz them or egg out the hole. So that's a really good thing. The factory like truck intake manifold is so tall. It's kind of like, it just gives it that appearance that you just put it something where it doesn't belong almost, which is, is funny. Uh, Holly does make a low profile intake manifold. Ford Performance just released their low profile intake manifold, which I think cuts it down about two inches and then brings the throttle body straight out. When we were doing this about a year ago, none of those were an option yet. We made this, uh, throttle body adapter right here. So from the factory, these things sit down pretty low in a truck. So that's why they kind of made the intake go up with the throttle body. But if you stick a throttle body on it, it's literally sticking out to right here. And then you have to hook some sort of a, you know, an air filter or whatever on it. That's why we relocated this. That way throttle body will go right there on the front and then we could just turn it to the side. You know, turbo manifold, in intake piping, turbo piping, air filter, whatever we're gonna do with it. So I feel like we made some decent progress in this video and I wish I was a, wish I had a magic wand where you could just go boom and it was just like done. But uh, you know, I think I, I think I like building cars. Um, I wish I did more of it and I know you guys wish I did more of it too, but the 7.3 content is here and we're gonna get this thing finished. We have a event planned, I think on the 17th of this month, which is kind of the first drift event of the year. It's not anything serious. It's literally just kind of a practice thing, but I would love to get this thing done and actually take it out which means that we have less than a week to get this thing done and it, it needs a lot of work. So uh, if you guys are stoked, leave a like and leave a comment. I really appreciate you guys tuning into this video. Stay tuned because we're gonna be ripping this thing soon.